When I purchased both the iPhone SE and the Apple Sport Watch, I received mixed signals from all of you. A few were adamantly opposed to the watch altogether, others rationalized the purchases as the best way to enter the ecosystem, some were confused as to why I purchased the SE rather than the 6S, and even still, a group of you praised my willingness to experiment and drop a hefty penny at that. And that's what I want to touch on first. Remember, I purchased all of these products, including the MacBook as well, with my own personal money. Apple did not sponsor me in any way, shape, or form, neither did any other company for that matter. In fact, the only income I'm pulling in from the series is either from YouTube ads directly or my Amazon affiliate links. And where I stand currently in terms of how I feel about the Apple Watch and the iPhone SE surprises me. I expected a much more restricted cohesion between the watch and the phone, but to be completely honest, they balance each other out in a way that I never thought possible. I use the watch just about as much as I use the phone, both make it easily through a full day of aggressive use, and build quality, as you might expect, is top notch. So let's start then with the iPhone SE. No, it's not an iPhone 5 or 5S, it looks nearly identical to the 5S, save the SE logo on the back, and even has the same chassis and screen dimensions. But while most would question the petite size of the iPhone SE in today's day and age, I find the size to be perfect. I'll repeat that, perfect. And here's why. I purchased my Note 4 brand new last season for 300 US dollars because I expected to be checking emails, scrolling through documents, and even running a few intense programs here at school for both my classwork and science studio. However, since I also purchased my 2016 MacBook, which you can check out in more detail right here, I absolutely love it. I find myself using this for more of those intense tasks, even checking emails. I do that on this more than I do my phone. And I use my phone mainly for just texting, calling, and playing the occasional game. I don't even really take pictures with my phone, let alone record, but the new 12 megapixel sensor with the f2.2 aperture does very well. It films in 4K at 30fps, 1080p at either 30, 60, or 120 frames per second, and 720p at, get this, 240 fps. Video is crisp, especially outdoors, and holds its own indoors as well. And when accompanied by stellar audio quality, you can almost convince your friends you recorded with a DSLR. Almost. A major downside, the iPhone SE does not come equipped with optical image stabilization. That's saved for the plus models of the iPhone. Even my Note 4 features OIS, and I must say, now that I've grown accustomed to it, not having it is a huge letdown. So let's talk software for a second. iOS 10 just rolled out and it's spectacular. If you haven't updated yet, I don't recommend waiting any longer unless you have storage concerns. This SE is only a 16 gigabyte model. It's how I managed to pick it up for 399 US dollars. But for what I do on this thing, and it's not much anymore thanks to the MacBook, I find that 16 gigs is more than enough for my daily needs. The entire operating system is smooth and functional, but still manages to maintain that conservative and controversial, I'll admit it, simplicity. It's definitely an unstable steady transition from Android, and I will admit every now and then I miss my widgets and stock camera controls. The dual-core A9 processor is blazing fast though, and 2GB of RAM is more than enough for the lightweight user interface. Battery life has been great since day one, and even after the upgrade to iOS 10, I still find myself with more than 50% battery left after a full day of moderate use. If you're a gamer or avid YouTube watcher, I commend you, but your battery life will suffer as a consequence. I will say, however, that it's nowhere near as deplorable as the Samsung Galaxy S6's battery life. Cheap shot, I know, it's why I went with the Galaxy Note 4 in the first place. So remember when I said that the chassis and screen of the SE were identical to the 5S? Well, I meant it. In literally every single way. The frame was stolen from the 5S, save the internal bridges and connections, and the screen is exactly the same. Apple makes no indication that anything was changed between this one and the one sported on the 5S. It produces one of those I'm not angry, just disappointed feelings. While the pixel density is still acceptable, 640p is just... It's just 640p, it's not even 720p, and it's not 1080, which would produce a pixel density similar to other current flagships. And this trend doesn't stop with the SE, even the iPhone 6 and 7 stick to 326 pixels per inch, that's the typical retina density, and it's just disappointing. The Plus models make an effort with 1080p, but at 5.5 inches, the density still doesn't compare to even my Galaxy Note 4. Apple needs to get off their high horse with the whole retina thing and move on to the industry standard, and that's 1440p. I suppose, however, you could make the argument that having fewer pixels results in longer battery life in the long run. 
It definitely shows with the SE, but I'm, I think I'm willing to make that trade-off. Now, let's transition to the Sport Watch for a second. It's pretty much what you'd expect. It isn't lightning fast, it can't send super complex text messages, I wouldn't want it to be able to do that anyway, the screen's too small, and even running WatchOS 3, it just isn't designed with power users in mind. It does, however, eliminate the inconvenience of pulling your phone out of your pocket to check text messages. You can even call on it if you're into looking like a secret service agent talking like this everywhere you go. Quality isn't the best, but it'll do in a dire situation. It'll vibrate, ring at you, tell you how many steps you've walked, the list goes on. And WatchOS 3 expands these horizons even further. Battery life from what I've found has been great. I've always had around 50% charge left after a full day's use. The OLED screen, a first for Apple, helps out here and also cuts out that annoying backlight bleed around the edges of a screen. It's also a retina, by the way, so pixels are nearly indistinguishable. Not quite as bright as the newly released Series 2 screen, but 450 nits is sufficient even in direct sunlight. It even comes with force touch. The sport band is actually super comfortable and easy to put on and remove, and the build quality rivals that of the SE and MacBook complements. It's not for everyone, and I completely understand that, but for 189 US dollars, the price has come down a bit thanks to the release of Series 2, I say give it a shot, and if you don't like it, just return the thing. But I have a feeling that if you're willing to at least try it out, you'll end up keeping it. I used to think smartwatches were stupid, plain and simple, I just I thought they were stupid. But now that I have one with a great feel and integration, I'd miss it for sure. And as for the pair, right now, I'm more than satisfied. A few of you told me to return both and purchase an iPhone 7 instead, but th this is my preference. Two isn't always better than one, but this is an exception in my book. I'm willing to compromise on a larger form factor and 3D touch for the sake of boasting a complimentary Apple Sport watch. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I understand why people are so aggressive in the comments, and there's some people who are just going to be diehard Android fans for life, and others will be diehard Apple fans for life. I used to think that I preferred Android more, but now that I have all this cohesion going on, I, I really am, uh, over time, I guess, being convinced that Apple is the way to go for mobile devices anyway. I wouldn't recommend Mac OS for just straight up desktop uh, workflows, but I think that for mobile devices, Apple's got it, they got it right. And there's a reason why a lot of other companies follow suit with their design and their integration. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for part four of this. I'm gonna do some RAM tests, interesting RAM tests with four gigs, eight gigs, 12 gigs, and 16 gigabytes of SD RAM, DDR4 SD RAM. And then uh, I guess, I don't know, we'll move on to other things. A review of a pretty cool gaming chair. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, you would have already known about that. I'm gonna end the video now. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with this.